I'm gonna make a bold statement here. The standard that is used to test how warm sleeping pads are cannot be trusted. But if you're going out on self-propelled winter camping and backpacking trips, these three sleeping pads are the only ones I think you should consider. The Thermrest X-Therm, Sea Summit Etherlite XT Extreme, and Xbed Downmat all have R values over six, which is the R value I think is necessary for winter camping, and they're all under 25 ounces in weight. We're gonna be doing an in-depth comparison of these pads, including infrared thermal testing to see which one is gonna be the warmest when you're out on winter camping trips and whether these pads can be comfortable and easy to use while you're out there. Starting with the cost of these pads, the X-Therm costs $220 US, the Etherlite XT Extreme costs $200 US, and then the Xped Dalmat costs $230 US. That's for the size regular of these pads. Like I said, these pads are all lightweight winter options. The Xtherm weighs 420 grams. The Etherlite XT Extreme weighs 720 grams, so it's the heaviest out of all of them. And then the Xped Down Mat weighs 480 grams. Once you get into winter rated sleeping pads, they start to get a little bit bulky in size. The Xtherm here is definitely the smallest of the three pads, especially when you get it out of the bag and it, you just have the pad by itself. While the Xped and the Sea to Summit are quite bulky, especially the Sea to Summit. This is the size regular and it's the bulkiest out of all three of these pads. From a quality perspective, the Xtherm and the Sea to Summit Etherlite XT definitely stand above the Xped pad. Sea to Summit and Thermrest both have lifetime warranties on their pads, while the Xped pad only has a five year warranty. As well, these two pads are made with more durable materials. The Xtherm actually uses a 70 denier bottom, which is the most durable material of all three of these pads, while the Xped only uses a 20 denier polyester fabric, which is not the most durable fabric in my experience. Noise is a big factor for people. The Xped pad here, the down mat, is the least noisy out of all the pads. It uses that polyester material for that fabric, which is a very quiet material. Then the insulation on the inside is down and down just does not crinkle or anything like that. So the Xped's a very quiet pad. You can see right now, not a lot of crinkle and not a ton of squeak with this pad. And then you get over to the Etherlite XT and the Xtherm. The Etherlite XT, it doesn't crinkle or anything because it uses a synthetic material for the insulation on the inside, but the outside is very rubbery and can often create kind of a squeaky sound against your tent floor or just as you move around on it. You can hear that noise right there. And then for the Xtherm, Thermarest pads that use the type of insulation that is inside here, it's kind of like a Mylar reflective film, is notorious for being crinkly and the Xtherm is a little bit crinkly. So you can hear that kind of chip bag like sound on the inside that can sometimes annoy people but on the Xtherm it's not quite as bad as some other pads that are out there from Thermarest. These pads all have very different features as well specifically when it comes to the valves and how easy they are to inflate and deflate. The Xtherm uses the wing lock valve that we have right here and then this inflation bag. I find that it does a pretty good job. I don't like really wide openings on inflation bags because I find it's hard to get a seal and then push air into the bag. But this valve does a pretty good job at allowing air into the pad, as well as when you're going to deflate the pad, it deflates relatively quickly. The old valves that Thermarest used were absolute garbage, so I'm glad that they've improved it with this pad. Then the Sea to Summit Etherlite XT has the best system for everything, I think, when it comes to inflation as well as the valve. You have a double flap valve here. So you open up one flap in order to attach the inflation bag to inflate the pad, and then you open up the second flap in order to dump all the air. And you can dump a ton of air this pad very easily. So it's really quick to deflate it and put it away. And then the inflation bag is really convenient. So you have the stuff sack here that you put the pad into, but then there's a second part that comes out the bottom and this creates the inflation bag. So there's a little nozzle here that you put into the valve and then you blow air into the one end and then you can push that air into the pad. So it's very similar to the Xtherm system with the bag, but because you have a more narrow open here that opens up to, an, to a large inflation bag, it's very easy to inflate this pad. And then the valve also has a little button on it, so you can press that button and it lets little bits of air out so you can micro adjust the pad so it's the right inflation level for you so you're as comfortable as possible. And then we have the Xped here, the poor Xped. It has one really nice feature in that there's little grippy material on top of the pad. So if you are using a very slippery sleeping bag, you're not gonna slide off the pad, but the inflation bag is only kind of okay. It has a very big opening, so I find it's hard to kind of close that up and get a good seal on it to push air into the pad. But then the valve on this pad is just absolute garbage. It uses 
a very old valve system. So there's just a little flap here and you have to blow air in and then it pushes the flap open and then gets air inside the pad. But in order to deflate the pad, you have to sit there holding this little flap open with your finger and then trying to push air out of the pad. It's very inconvenient and not a very good system at all. One of the most important things I think with a sleeping pad is comfort. During wintertime, warmth is super important. We're gonna to get to that. But all three of these pads vary di quite differently in how comfortable they are. And that has to do with two different factors, the baffling system that they use and then how thick they are. And we're gonna start off with the least comfortable of these pads and that's the Xtherm. It's only 2.5 inches thick and then uses a horizontal baffle system. So you don't have as much thickness in order to provide comfort for you, especially if you are a heavier person, you could potentially sink through this pad really easily and then hit the ground. And then I find with horizontal baffles, sometimes it just creates weird pressure points. And I've had times where my arm or my leg has fallen asleep because of the pressure that the horizontal baffles put on my body. Then we have the X-Ped down mat. This is a pretty comfortable pad and it has vertical baffles that you see. So the baffles run along the lengthwise of the pad. And I find that more comfortable than horizontal baffles. And this pad is 3.5 inches thick. So this is quite the thick pad. I find that the soft polyester material that this pad uses is also a little bit more comfortable than the more rubbery nylon material that the Cetus Summit and Xtherm use. But the most comfortable pad of all of these is the Etherlite XT Extreme. You can see it has these kind of dimples throughout the pad and those create a baffling system that takes pressure off of spots very well. So if you are laying on your side and your shoulders on one of these dimples, it's gonna take that pressure off very effectively. As well, it creates a very stable platform. So there's very good edge support so you can sleep right on the edge and still be very comfortable on this pad. I've never had arms fall asleep or anything. This is the only pad out of all three of these where I've slept through the night without waking up once and that's happened multiple times which is very rare when I'm out in the backcountry. It's also a four inch thick pad so it's the thickest of all these pads and that is a big benefit for comfort but as we'll see as we start talking about warmth it may not be a benefit for keeping you warm at night. Let's get into talking about how warm these sleeping pads are because it's probably the most important characteristic for a sleeping pad when you're going out in cold weather and winter conditions. And we're going to spend some time on this because there's some really interesting things happening with these pads. The one that has the R, highest R value, the down mat at 7.1, isn't the warmest. The Xterm has an R value of 6.9, and then the Etherlite XT has an R value of 6.2, but that does not tell the whole story with how well these pads are gonna keep you warm at night. Let's start off with the Xterm. In my experience, the Xterm is the warmest sleeping pad of the bunch, even though the Xbed has a higher R value, and it uses a really interesting mechanism in order to insulate you from the ground. It has thin reflective film kind of suspended throughout the pad called thermocapture technology, and that reflects heat back up to you and cold back to the ground. And then it also has triangular core matrix technology throughout, which helps with convective heat loss. So if you're tossing and turning throughout the night, you're not gonna be mixing cold air from the bottom of the pad or the sides of the pad as much with the warm air that you've heated up around your body. And that technology is also why the Xtherm is the lightest out of all three of the pads. That kind of technology that it's using has a really high warmth to weight ratio. The next warmest pad in my experience, even though it has the lowest R value, is the Sea Summit Etherlite XT Extreme. It uses a Thermolite synthetic insulation. So there's a thick insulation piece that's attached to this pad throughout, and that's what insulates you from the ground. In my experience, that kind of insulation isn't the warmest. And then the way that it's used within this pad also opens you up to convective heat loss a lot. And we're gonna see that when we look at the analysis and the imagery from the infrared thermal imaging that I did on all three of these pads. The least warm of the pads is the down mat. So it uses 700 power fill down throughout the pad and then that's what provides the insulation. It is very effective at preventing convective heat loss. So if you are tossing and turning, you're not gonna have as much mixing of cold and warm air. But what you see with that down is that it does migrate throughout the baffling of the pads and you'll sometimes have cold spots in the pad. The other thing that makes this pad almost unusable in wintertime for me is that the side baffles, these two side baffles, don't have any insulation in them. So while you have down in the middle and that area is very good at insulating you from the ground. If you sleep on the side a little bit or if you're using a quilt that wraps all the way around, you're not gonna have effective insulation. And for that reason, I've only been able to use this pad to about zero degrees Celsius or freezing comfortably. Whereas with the Xterm, 
You can get down to minus 25 degrees Celsius easily with just the pad, and then about minus 15 degrees Celsius with the Etholite XT Extreme. Normally I don't like giving temperature ratings for pads, but I know that's the easiest way to kind of think about how pads are gonna keep you warm. There's a lot of other factors other than air temperature that are gonna affect how much insulation you need in your sleeping pad, like ground temperature, ground moisture levels, whether it's rained recently, there's a lot of factors there. And that's why R value is the best measure for sleeping pad warmth and not providing them with an air temperature rating. So let's get into the infrared thermal imagery testing that I did with these pads. What I did for that is I had a heating pad that I heated up to 40 degrees Celsius. It was very consistent at that temperature. I let that sit for 10 minutes, then I'd put one of the pads on top of it and then let the pad heat up for 10 minutes and then use the infrared camera to see what the top temperatures were on top of the pad. And there is a few different things that I was looking at with this. As you can see, the average temperatures for all three pads was pretty similar, 24 degrees for the Xtherm, 24.3 for the down mat, and then 25 for the Etholite XT. That kind of lines up with the R values, which makes sense because it's very similar testing methodology to what they do for ASTM R value testing. But then if we're all, they're all testing that way, why are we seeing differences in real world performance? The real world performance measurements line up a little bit better for the hot spot temperatures. So you can see the Xtherm has a hot spot temperature of 27 degrees Celsius. So that's a 13 degree difference from what the heating pad underneath is putting up. The Etholite XT had a hot spot of 28 degrees Celsius, and then the down mat had a hot spot of 31 degrees Celsius. So that hot spot with the X-PED is only a nine degree difference between what the ground temperature was and then the top of the pad. So while the X-PED has an average insulating ability that's quite good, you're gonna have those little hot spots that I think are just kind of tunnels of cold that are gonna come up through the pad and then cool off that air that you've warmed up inside your sleeping bag. The Etholite XT also has a lot of those little hot spots, and then the Xtherm does not have a lot of hot spots. Its ability to insulate is quite consistent across the pad. And that's something you'll notice with the Etholite XT Extreme and Xtherm compared to the down mat. The down mat actually doesn't have a lot of spread of heat. So you can see that that down inside the X-Pad is preventing heat from moving throughout the pad quite a bit. Whereas you, with the Etholite XT Extreme, you're seeing a lot of heat move to the edges, and then same with the Xtherm. With the Xerm, that's not as bad because you're getting very good insulative properties. But something that is a bit of an issue with the Etholite XT Extreme is that if you're getting a lot of movement of heat to the outside of the pad, because of that four inch thick side to here, if you have a really cold temperature, air temperatures, then that could be cooling off the side and that air that's getting cooled off on the sides could be moving easily into the inside and middle of the sleeping pad. So especially if you're an active sleeper, you could experience pretty cold nights with the Etholite XT relative to some of these other pads. So I took all those factors that we just looked at, size and weight, cost, warmth, comfort, and I ranked these pads and gave them points depending on how well they did in each category. So three was the highest amount of points a pad could get and one was lowest. As you can see from this chart, the Xtherm and Etholite XT scored the best with 17 points each and the down mat fell short with 13. The big things that set the Xtherm apart were weight and size, as well as warmth and quality, whereas the Etholite XT Extreme stood apart with cost, features, comfort, and quality. Well, all three of these pads will be good for winter camping, as well as if you run cold during three season camping conditions. If winter and cold weather really isn't your thing, go check out a video post right up in the corner there, where I compare three, three season sleeping pads, the most popular sleeping pads on the market, and go over all the functions and features that they have and how they perform in order to let you guys know which one you should get for your outdoor adventures.